Ah, uh, think tank. The harbor of... How do I put this nicely? Is it stupidity? Ignorance? No. I'm gonna call it Americanism. Yes. The harbor of Americanism. The word that means stupid, ignorant, and loud at the same time. Hey guys, welcome back to Think Tank. Hannah here with Miss Stephanie Gray. This Miss Stephanie Gray? Did you just put an emphasis on the Miss? Are you really so conservative that you are judging the status of a woman by her marital status? Shame on you. Shame on you, Think Tank. This is her first time on Think Tank, guys. <laughs> so we are super excited to have her. And She's having her public Americanism cherry popped. Yay! Praise the Lord. And Stephanie, I know you've watched some of our clips, uh, but something we really like to do here on Think Tank is kind of uh, look into other cultures and compare right. how they're the same and how they're different. You're quite the amateur anthropologist, aren't you? Yes, yes. Play that anthropology. And today we we're talking about some American things that Europeans think are crazy. Absolutely bonkers. And this is Now, I can agree that many people find Americans crazy, especially because of all the bombing, the war waging, the terrorist supporting, and so on. But you to compare the cultures, well, yes, you, you think there are just two cultures, of two different continents. So, I know... I know that by America you mean the United States, but nonetheless, it still could refer to the Americas or North America. And lest I recall, your and Mexican culture are very different. Anyway, how many countries are there in Europe? How many countries that are recognized? And also many that are not non-recognized and so on, and many regions that want independence. And you're putting all these nations that not only are extremely different, but also hold immense, immense animosity towards each other. Immense hatred and ethnic tensions you can see every year on the Eurovision competition. Anyway, all these nations that want to kill each other for centuries and you're equating their culture? Well, not only is that insulting to every single nation in Europe, and trust me, there's a lot of nations in Europe, um, but it's also wrong there. It's also wrong. And we're going to see how wrong you are. The current theme that we like to delve into, because we like to highlight uh, how insane us Americans are. It's so true. Yes. Crazy, aggressive, and murderous people are the Americans. For example, here we can see two pictures. A one of a cluster bomb and a one of an anti-infantry landmine. Both banned by the international community, well, by those who signed the treaty. Anyway, they are both banned, um, but the United States refused to join the ban because they like killing innocents, and they like killing a lot of people, you see? How are you is a greeting, not a question. <laughs> so, uh, I lived abroad. Did you know? You lived abroad. How interesting, dear. Tell me, how often do you leave your country? How often do you exit the United States of America? Not often, I presume. Uh, and also, a terrifying st statistic, well, at terrifying at least for me, most Americans don't have passports. Therefore, they cannot travel. Granted, with the rise of the European Union, uh, many people are now able to travel with only a personal document, like a personal ID card, but many Americans don't even have that. So... Tell me this, how do you travel to other countries? You don't often. But Europeans, well, borders being so close to each other, uh, often cross borders, often cross countries, and 
even that one line invisible on it's only on the map can change so much so much there like for example here we're civilized and normal and across the border in Italy they eat cats and pigeons and like now we just like ask how are you you say yeah. you say good you don't say anything other than like good because if you say like okay I'm like Oh my God! Is yeah. your mom dying? Like, what's going on? I'm like, on? Mm, I really don't have time. Yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't go into that. But in other cultures, when you ask, like, "How are you?", you're really asking, oh, like, yeah. "How are you in your personal state? Like, what's going on in your How's life? How's your family?" Mm -hmm. How's your While this might be true and probably is of some other cultures, it certainly is not true of the European culture. For example, in Slovenia. If you ask someone how are you, it is also a greeting, although it is an archaic, nowadays it's archaic greeting, because nowadays we greet people by asking them, where are you? You would be surprised to learn that in Haiti, yes, in Haiti, uh, they greet people by asking them, are you alive? Well, because it's also possible that that person is a zombie, you know, that person anyway. And if they are not alive, they are supposed to tell you, hey, I'm not alive, but usually, because usually you don't meet that people, uh, they will ask you, uh, they will, no, ask you, they will answer you, yes, I'm alive, and that's a greeting in Haiti. Very interesting. I don't know why I just put this in. Anyway, let's move on. In, where was I? I think it was in Denmark. Yes, the Germanic peoples are strange and the mortal enemy of the Slav. I want to know how people are. Can we not bury the lead that you're also a world traveler? Denmark, <laughs> studied abroad, sorry, my jet-setting life. Okay, Hannah. <laughs> Although it is impressive that she crossed the Atlantic to study and live and things, I do not find it so impressive to stay sheltered inside the Anglo-Saxon slash Germanic worlds. If you're crossing the Atlantic, at least go to the trouble of going to Eastern Europe, to Russia, to Belarus, to Ukraine. Which coincidentally is one of my goals, because I don't have the money to even travel in the same continent that far. I was fortunate enough to travel as far as Spain and Turkey, but not those exotic places. But anyway, if you're going to cross an ocean to visit a different culture, go to Japan, honey. Go to Japan. Or at least, I mean, Chile or South or Africa, not South Africa, Africa. Like Central African Empire, or what's it called nowadays? The next one is. I was one. Uh, tax is not represented on the price tag. Now, obviously, when you. Yeah, why is that? That's strange. The like, convenience store, something like that. They're like, oh, it's 2 dollars So, uh, this is actually a real life store. I wanted to buy uh, a protein bar at 7 Eleven the other day. And I went, and I was like, $2.50, okay? And I was like, oh, sweet, I can get two because I only had $5 and it went to cash um, because I'm poor. Um, and I went out, and she's like, oh, like $6.29 or something. I was like, nah, I totally yeah, yeah, yeah. whole tax thing. But in Europe, they apparently uh, ha they still have the tax, but it's displayed on the price tag, so you don't need right. to, like, do the math in your head and yeah. be sorely embarrassed when you get to the front of the checkout line. I yes, that's because the price is considered to be the final price regardless of how much of that the state takes, how much of that the manufacturer takes, and how much of that the sales person thing organization takes. Because if you were to fragment all those prices and just say, write uh, the price of the product on uh, for the price of the, 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 the ingredients yes the, let's say the ingredients uh, is you really never would kn uh, know what the price is until you get to the uh, cashier's counter Next, coin names. Now, we have the dime, the nickel, the quarter, but none of those, I mean, kind of quarter, uh, represent how much they're actually worth. Whereas if you are uh, 
in a, a European country, and I'm, I'm assuming you're on the euro at that point, each coin, their name, is actually how much they're worth. So it's like pretty clear how much you have in your hand. We just have random coin names. That is very dismissive of the countries that do not have the euro, honey. Like, for example, Russia. They don't have the euro, they have the Russian ruble. Or the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. They use the uh, British pound. Or Hungary. They use the foreign. Why do you presume that everybody is using euros in Europe? I mean, the system is, let's not get into this, it's very dismissive of you and you should be ashamed of yourself. It's confusing. Yeah. And... It is confusing and it proves how backwards the United States are. I mean, even the English uh, used to have strange names and they even didn't used to have a decimal system for their coinage and money. It was a whole weird... Uh, what's it called, when you have the basis of counting is 12, I believe. So, the dozens, they were counting their money by dozens, and it was very strange, and I believe they only got rid of that in the 70s. And this just proves how backwards the United States are, and why we should carpet bomb the place. Cashless. Americans are notoriously cashless. Mm -hmm. That's why we had five dollars at the 7-Eleven the other day because uh, I don't carry cash around with me. But in uh, European countries, they do carry cash with them, and they. Um, I think there's another part of their culture that it, we're not really get, delving into here. But they also are not like mass buyers. Like we go to cost. I really fail to see this culture you are describing here of Europe. For most people I know, live off of credit. Credit cards, all sorts of credit cards. And when you live off of credit because your paycheck is too low to actually pay for basic goods like electricity and food for your family, you usually buy a lot of stuff at once at the big supermarket at the end of town. Granted, this is a fairly new thing. And granted, when you speak later of the farmer's market and stuff like that, people like using that and it's more and more popular because uh, people don't want ex imported american salad but anyway most people live off of credit cards and they use credit cards people do not have cash to spend because well because we have to spend money for basic goods and we have to take loans actual loans from banks and visa and shit to get through the month so they do need sort of smaller bills and things like that because it just makes, makes it more convenient. But this, honey, is the smallest euro bill you that exists at all. Since we're talking about euros, you discriminatory cunt. Anyway. This is a 5 euro bill and it's worth approximately six dollars. There are no smaller bills of euros. There are only small denominations on coins. When I was watching this video for well, when I decided to do this thing with this video, I had this overwhelming urge to put the clucking sounds of chickens, you know, bah, 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 over them, but I resisted. I resisted. But I don't know if it was the right choice to do, but I believe it makes me a gentleman. Next one is options. So when you go to the grocery store in America, we have like 45 different types of like almond butter. <laughs> Maybe because it's a competitive 
state of markets, and so many people are selling milks that they think that they'll win out by having the most variety. You know, we'll get consistent. Trying to hit that like American dream. Yeah, capitalizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're selfish and we are picky. We're yeah, sorry it. for being American. <laughs> Just a few quick points for this part with Kim's group. There is only, okay, not only one kind, but milk can only come from animals. Almond milk is not milk. Fucking idiots. Um, and also, you said you were spoiled. You are spoiled. And you are particularly spoiled if you do not know how markets actually function. Or how you, you don't need to go to the other part of the world to know what it looks like, you know? We have this wonderful thing called the internet. For example, if you look what you are talking about, and if you look at a common supermarket in, say, Britain, larger centers, of course, large supermarkets, not small, Anyway, if you look at a large supermarket in Britain, you will struggle to find differences, honey. Particularly because, well, Americans and English are basically the same. And also, if you go to a large supermarket I don't know, in France or something, you'll get the exact same options and the exact same number of options. So, I don't know where you're getting this from. You know, there's this new thing called Google. Use it sometimes. Okay, next one is 24-hour stores. And now, this is something that's really interesting. So, a lot of 7-Elevens and things like that will be open 24 hours. I think the last time my house is open, yeah, 24 hours. Wait, 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 wait. So, there's a lot of 24-hour stores, but a lot of things that happen in uh, Europe are, are a lot of stores. Their hours are, like, till 6. And then they're like, ah. Oh. Yes. People who work entire days of in uh, behind the counter serving spoiled American tourists do tend to like to go home to their children and loved ones once the day is over. And also, why the fuck would you need a grocery store in the middle of the night? What are you doing outside in the middle of the night buying milk? Go to sleep. And then they will take a lunch break, which... Again, honey, I don't know what country you are talking about, because when well, stores usually do not have... Uh, do not close for lunch breaks. Uh, here, at least. They do in Spain, and they have two-hour lunch breaks. Um, but no store would close for a lunch break at 6 in the evening. That's 1,800 hours for you. That's when people go home, not when people go for a lunch. You see, though, again, Spain, they do have lunch at like 5 in the evening. So. You should clarify what country you're talking about. At 18.00 is not closing early, it's closing in the evening. Closed on Sundays, like that doesn't even yeah. compute for us. Funny you should mention that. A few years ago, there was a referendum in Slovenia whether or not stores should be closed on Sundays. And the referendum was in a large, clear majority that they should be closed on Sundays. Yet, through, of course, government, different governments manipulating this and getting around the unemployment problem, well, attempting to get around it by allowing uh, stores to employ people for Sundays. Our stores are open on Sundays, which is actually a crime, which is against the will of the people and should be stopped. So, all Slovenians that are listening to me, write to your um, representatives in parliament, write to your mayors, write to the president and the prime minister that we should respect the decision of said referendum. one is not taking vacation days so uh, in America we really don't take vacation days and we really don't take advantage of all the vacation days that we're given every year and I think no that is crazy the law requires you to have vacation days 
and you are stupid if you do not use them. Even if you don't have money to go to, say, the seaside, use up your vacation days. They belong to you by the law. And if you don't use them by the next year, they will go to waste. They will go to complete waste. So, use vacation days and stay healthy, people. Here's the urge to put in the chicken clucking sound again. But the squeaking of the sped up audio seems to do, do the job. In European cultures, I think, like, they get, I want to say in some of the Scandinavian countries, they get like three months of vacation. That's and I'm pretty sure not even the Swedes are crazy enough to put in three. Praise the Lord! She finally realizes that things are different between different <laughs> countries. Long live Jesus! <laughs> what kind of industry you're in and what country you live in but they have a lot of uh vacation days and it's part of that praise the lord she finally realizes that things are different between different countries long live jesus here they proceed to cluck about all sorts of things but it does remind me of what people used to say in the times of socialism here it goes something like this. Even if the shovel is in the concrete mixer and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you leave it as is. Even if the concrete mixer is still on and you go home. Because it's 2 o'clock, you finish your shift and you go home. It doesn't matter. And, you know, this is basically all about Americans not knowing how to work properly and what shifts are and to respect the working hours. I would like to remind you that the worker should work eight hours a day, should sleep eight hours a day, and should use eight hours a day for recreation and culture. That's all from me for this video. I do hope to get myself off of my lazy ass and make more for you guys. Uh, our, su our subscription count is slowly and steadily rising. So if you don't know any friends who like this sort of things and who like improvised explosive devices, please uh, do tell them about this channel. Goodbye and... Oh, yes. Goodbye and kill all humans!